three lines down, says, Surely you understand and agree that a situation in which repairs or even a repair plan for the steam generators remain unknown is not in the interest of either of our companies. What did Edison mean by that? Your Honor, I'm going to object. This is outside the scope. We're now getting into debates about what happened between Edison and Mitsubishi. I thought we were here to talk about costs. There hasn't been a linkage to costs. Sustained. Your Honor, I understand why Edison has suppressed this document throughout this proceeding. I, I, it was I, only delivered this morning. There's been no suppression, Your Honor. Yeah, please resume your question in this season. The second bullet in those three bulleted items further down the page, Mr. Palmisano? Yes. Demands a return within a short time frame all four steam generators to service at 100% rated electric power under the song's upright conditions. What did Edison envision by the phrase a short time frame? Objection, Your Honor. Scope. Sustained. Go on to uh, SCE 17. I have that. Could you describe what this is? Uh, let me review the attachment here. Okay. Off the record. Would you describe what, what the letter is? Palmasano, would you describe what exhibit SCE-17 is? Uh, SCE-17 is a letter from Mitsubishi Nuclear Energy Systems. Uh, Mr. Yamuchi, President and CEO of Mitsubishi Nuclear Energy Systems, to Mr. Peter Dietrich, the Senior Vice President and Chief Nuclear Officer for Southern California Edison. Would it be fair to consider this a reply to SCE-21? Uh, yes, it is. In that first paragraph in Mr. Yamachi's letter, the second sentence, he says, in your letter, Southern California Edison also expresses concern over the time that it is taking. Did Edison have a concern over the time that it was taking? Objection, Your Honor, scope. There's been no linkage to cost, Your Honor. Sustained, but, but Mr. Giesman, um, I'm going to allow you to, to continue the line of questioning, but do try and bring it back to costs. I'm looking. I'm looking at the three legs of 
paragraph four of Judge Darling's order to Edison to produce SCE-10. And the chronological timeline is supposed to identify dates that Edison gained key knowledge about the shutdown, made key operational decisions, and commenced key operational actions. And I think all of these questions have lied within those three legs, and they all relate to costs. I disagree. They don't relate to any of the three. Since it was my ruling, I'll respond. I think that what you're – I'm inclined to sustain the objection on this ground. These letters are not – they're talking about future actions that are anticipated going forward. There's been no questioning, no linkage, no foundation to did Edison take information from these letters and use it as a basis for an action or a key operational decision or an expenditure, which is what the exhibit order requested. Furthermore, I mean, because these letters come out late in the year, I mean, I'm not sure what a president-to-president please behave letter tells us, but these letters, up to the point that they actually provide repair options, which can then be linked to actions, decisions, or expenditures, I'm not sure how you're going to loop this into relevance into Phase 1. Your Honor, if I may, the absence of – and I can quote any of the phrases – a viable repair plan, the absence of a viable replacement strategy calls into question the prudence of all of the expenditures prior to the presence of such a plan. And you're certainly free to argue that, and you've made that point repeatedly, but there's nowhere else to go with it, Mr. Giesen, unless you want to link it to specific actions, decisions, or expenditures. I'm simply trying to confirm the nonexistence of any plan or any strategy for long-term repair or replacement of either the two steam generators in Unit 2 or the two steam generators in Unit 3. And how does that relate to 2012 expenditures? These repair – you can make what you want of it, the fact that long-term repair options are not provided by Mitsubishi until the tail end of 2012. It's relevant to whether they acted on that information that they got December 14th through December 28th, but it's not taking you anywhere in terms of back into earlier in 2012. You can certainly argue that – maybe you want to argue that because they had no long-term repair problem, it was imprudent to do anything. That's an argument you can make, but it doesn't make it relevant here to talk about long-term repair plans that are going to be implemented or not after 2012. Can I ask if Edison will then stipulate to the absence of any long-term repair plan throughout 2012? Well, I would first say that I'm not sure that that's the facts and evidence. You can try and see if you come up with an objection. Why don't you ask him that question? Ask him that question. Will Southern California Edison Company stipulate to the absence of any long-term repair or replacement plan throughout calendar 2012 with respect to either Unit 2 or Unit 3? Absolutely not. We've worked diligently on a strategy for long-term repair. Your Honor, that's why I've been pursuing this line of questioning. I don't think they agree with my perspective about the absence of such a plan. Well, you may read this language to say that Edison is saying nobody's got any plan. Another person might read this as saying, MHI, how come you don't have your plan together that's subject to warranty claims? So I don't think that you've established by virtue of these exhibits that Edison has admitted it had no plan whatsoever. What you've established is that someone at Edison wrote to someone at Mitsubishi and said, Mitsubishi, how come you don't have any plans for us yet? We have a warranty. So that's a different interpretation. You're free to argue it. You're free to inquire about it. Your Honor, in light of 
the concerns that I expressed at the beginning of my questioning in terms of inadequate time to prepare on these exhibits because of the way in which they were delivered to me. Can I cede my time to some of the other parties and come back subsequently with further questions? So my question is, did you make a data request for any letters, any correspondence between Edison and, and Mitsubishi? We went over yesterday my data request, Your Honor, and established that Edison had not responded to my data request. And Mr. Weissman's explanation was, if you read that, it just says we'll search for documents, not that we'll actually produce them, actually, which is a variation of my dog ate my homework. That's, uh, I take exception to that remark, Your Honor. And that's not what I said. What I said was we had objected subsequent to that meeting conferred. Uh, having said that, I have no objection to Mr. Giesman ceding the time, and if there are uh, other parties who wish to examine Mr. Palmasano, we can use the time productively, and we can come back to Mr. Giesman at a later time. Okay. So, uh, do you want to be heard on this, or do you want to get in line? I would like to be heard on this, Your Honor. Matt Friedman, representing Turner, I find myself somewhat confused about what is in scope here. In the scoping ruling, there was a specific item that was deemed to be within the scope of phase one, um, issues related to the nature and effects of steam generator failures in order to assess the reasonableness of SCE's consequential actions and expenditures. These, the questions Mr. Giesman is asking appear to be about the nature and effects of the steam generator failures, and they seem to be intended to understand the reasonableness of Edison's consequential actions. I, I thought this was in phase one. If it's not in phase one, where does it live now? I guess I, I have a different interpretation of Mr. Giesman's question. Mr. Giesman's question seems to me to be asking this witness to climb inside one, climb inside the mind of MHI and explain why MHI did or did not do certain things. Two, it's, ask, it's trying to interpret that the, this, these letters from um, Edison as admissions of certain absence of planning activities to the extent those could ultimately be rated, related to 2012 expenditures. Those questions are appropriate. What's not, what's not is to get into the details of the causes and effects. The question is we know what happened. We know there were tubes. We know there was a leak. We, knew, we now know that there are things that you do that they have chosen to do. You can take issue with whether they're reasonable to do, but you don't need to identify whether there is a plan going forward for the future of the steam generators in order to determine what was appropriate in March or July or November of 2012. To the extent you've got a letter that says, has some admission or has some information that relates to the expenditures fully within phase one. What, what is curious to me is I just don't think that we're going to get very far in 2012 based on repair proposals that come from Mitsubishi for the long term that arrive in December because it goes to the future of operation of the plant, phase three. It's going to go to expenditures after 2012, except for perhaps a week or two unless Mr. Giesman or someone is able to make a linkage to something in 2012. I understand, Your Honor. I guess um, then my concern would be that um, in a subsequent phase, parties might be precluded from asking about actions in 2012. Um, I, I don't know where you got that idea. So the, the phase three covers everything from the steam generator uh, replacement projects commencement forward, including the future of the plant. So I'm not sure where you get that idea. Okay, I appreciate your clarification. Okay. And unless we're on my ruling, uh, Judge Dedney's in charge. Mm -hmm. Are we on my ruling? I'd like to weigh in on this. Um, I'd like to just emphasize the fact that we are talking about a hundred at least that we know of that Edison has copped to, $130 million of O&M costs that were spent above their authorized level in 2012, correct? 
Yes, and this will be up for final so review we're in about phase whether three. Whether dollars were reasonably spent in 2012 or not? And what goes into that decision making is not something that happened in November or December of 2012 does not affect the decision making in January, March, or July. It's a matter of timing. But I will say that, that asking about Edison's decision making throughout 2012 is a valid Which question. is exactly what I said, Ms. Sullivan. Okay, so. Your Honor, I, I do have a procedural question uh, that I think relates to at least something you said yesterday uh, with respect to SCE 16. Okay. You indicated in response to Mr. Friedman uh, that you would be reading uh, the unredacted version of SCE 16 in determining uh, the appropriateness of the redactions. Uh, yeah, Mr. Giesman, I, I did actually uh, read both side by side uh, yesterday. Go ahead. And have you had a, a, an opportunity to determine uh, whether these redactions uh, are appropriate or not? Let me answer a different question. I, I think the redacted information is not necessary for phase one. And with respect to uh, the uh, two attachments, uh, the one that you referred to as a Gantt chart, mm -hmm. uh, in asking Mr. Perez questions, and then uh, the attachment three, uh, you don't feel that that those redactions are uh, appropriate or, or relevant to, to phase one? With re Yeah, I, I think that's generally true. I, I'll admit that I, I didn't get through attachment three in great detail, but everything prior to that in the letter Yes, I, I think is not necessary for phase one. When do you think you would be uh, prepared to make such a determination uh, on attachment three? I'm prepared. <laughs> I'm prepared. <laughs> I think that the it, we, it is not relevant to phase one. We can have these arguments about what is relevant in phase three in terms of looking at root causes. What we have in, in this attachment is a uh, uh, ranking of options that are being presented in the last two weeks of 2012, which indicates that no actions are being taken yet because they're still being analyzed, which only goes to further support that it's not relevant to phase one. You can ask them if there's any actions they took in connection to the, what was recommended in 2012 and made any expenditures in 2012. But everything in this exhibit suggests that it's all 2013 and beyond. Your Honor, aren't you suggesting that someone driving down the road with his windshield completely blacked out could be acting reasonable? I, I don't accept your metaphor. I think you need to move on, Mr. Beesman. Well, I, I will request the opportunity to cede my time and, and come back later if there's anything remaining of permissible questions when it comes my turn again. All right.